Today we're going to make a classic British comfort food dish, bangers and mash. Now in case you don't know, bangers and mash is just sausages with mashed potato and usually some gravy and maybe peas. Bangers and mash is a classic British comfort dish. It's really, really simple. There's nothing elaborate about what we're doing today, but it's a fantastic pub favourite and classic comfort food. So the sausages I've got today are these heck sausages, which are 97% pork. They're a mixture of fatty and lean pork, and I find them to be quite a good sausage. The remaining 3% is things like rice flour, salt, spices, and of course the casing. So, first thing to do is to get these into the pan. We're going to cook these really slowly so that they go tender and so that they brown all over and produce some nice browning in the pan. So I would place these sausages kind of midway between the really cheap sausages that are just like a pork and rusk paste in a skin and the best sausages you can get from the butcher. These are kind of mid-range sausages and I like them. So I'm just going to put those on the back burner there and I just want them to sizzle away gently. We're going to cook them really slow. Next I've got some potatoes. This is a variety called Estima. It's a yellow potato that's got a smooth flesh and is ideal for mashing. Potatoes come in different varieties ranging from floury at one end to waxy at the other. These are somewhere in the middle. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing sausages and mash. Why am I doing bangs and mash? It's such a straightforward and almost no recipe dish that why am I making a video about it? Well this is going to be a collab again with my friend Babatunde in Nigeria. He's very keen to try another British favourite recipe and a lot of the British recipes I would like to do with him require an oven which he hasn't got. So we picked this one really because it can be done in pans on top of a, a burner. Perhaps one day I think he's, he's thinking about getting a charcoal oven so perhaps we might be able to do some baking and other types of dishes that require oven cooking later on but at the moment we've got to kind of pick the things that fit the methods that are available to us. Really any variety of potato will do actually here and even sweet potatoes will be fine and this mashed sweet potato is really nice and goes very well with sausages so don't worry if you can't get the right kind of potatoes. I believe that these kind of potatoes are called Irish potatoes in Nigeria as opposed to potatoes which are what we would call sweet potatoes. The only thing that's probably not likely to work all that well for mashing is if you've got salad potatoes they might not mash up very well. This little potato peeler, I, I like it a lot actually. It's, it takes very nice thin peelings off of the potatoes. If I was just going to boil these potatoes and have them whole, I would probably leave the skins on because a lot of the nutrition is in the skin. But for mash, we do need peeled potatoes. Okay, now because we're mashing these, we can cut them into fairly small pieces and they'll cook a bit quicker because of that. But the important thing here is to try and keep the pieces a consistent size so that they will cook fairly evenly across the whole, across the whole batch. And then potatoes into a pan of cold water. We'll have a tiny bit of salt in there because I won't be adding salt to the mash. In fact, the butter I've got to add to the mash later is unsalted butter. And then the third component of what we're making today is going to be onion gravy. So I've just got a medium sized onion and I'm going to cut that into thin slices. And then these onions are just going to be fried ever so gently. Again, I'm going to cook them really slowly in a pan just with a tiny bit of vegetable oil there. I'm going to cook that slowly so that they soften and caramelize without going crispy. If you've only got a single burner, this part could be done ahead of time. Cooking the onions down until they're caramelized and soft could easily be done ahead of time. Now, if you're going to find this dish a little bit underspiced, this is the part where you could toss in a scotch bonnet into the onions here. Chop that up, mix that in with the onions and, and fry that down and give it a little bit of extra pepper. So you can see these onions are starting to caramelize now. And just to help them along, I'm just going to put a little bit of sugar in the pan. Not necessary at all. 
but I find that that helps the onions to really brown and caramelize. So we'll just move those around, let them pick up that sugar. The juices from the onions will dissolve the sugar and then the heat will turn that into a nice dark brown, tasty, sweet caramel. Keeping things nice and slow in this pan here. I think we're probably about ready to put the potatoes on. So potatoes, we're just gonna put on the front burner here. We can see that there's fat and juices starting to come out of the sausages now, and that's great. We're not gonna throw any of that away because the fat and pan drippings from these sausages is gonna form the basis of our gravy. And you see what's happening to these onions now? They've softened right down and they've started to turn brown, but they're not brown and crispy. They're sort of brown and gooey. We're almost making a kind of onion jam here. So these sausages have still got a little way to go, but I just want to show you what's happening on here. Because we're cooking these really slow, instead of the skins just going crispy, there are these sticky bits appearing. And that's where the juices from the meat are coming out and reducing and browning on the pan. And so we're creating a quite different experience here for eating these sausages than we would if we just cooked them really quick or cooked them in an oven even. All of these sticky bits basically are flavour and we're just trying to encourage as much of that as we can in these sausages. Right, so these sausages are getting pretty close to done now. They've got a really nice golden brown colour on them and they're looking pretty even. Potatoes, yeah, they're breaking apart now. You can see that when I try and pick them up with a knife, they just fall off, which means they're done. Now this might be different for sweet potatoes. You just got to judge when you think they're going to be soft enough to mash. But these potatoes are definitely done now. So this might seem like the strangest thing ever, but I'm going to save the water. I'm going to save the water from these potatoes because this we're going to use to make our gravy. So I will set that starchy potato water aside. This pan of potatoes now completely drained but we're gonna leave it open like that so that some of the steam can leave it. And that'll give us a fluffier mashed potato. Gonna add in a good chunk of butter. Put that in on top and the warmth of the potatoes can melt that down. You might add a bit more in a minute. And while those are steaming a little bit there and that butter's melting, we'll go over and make the gravy. Sausages are cooked completely to my satisfaction here. Some people might like them a little bit more crisp than that. I tend to like them as brown as that. I find if I cook them any further than that, they start to dry out. So we've got this pan that's got, you can see the brown juices from the sausages have caramelized in the bottom of the pan there. And we've got what looks like about a tablespoon and a half of fat from the sausages. We're not gonna waste any of that. So I'm just gonna add in, to start with, about a tablespoonful of plain flour. I'm just gonna mix that in and see how it goes. We'll mix that into the fat. I think we can probably go for a bit more. Yeah, about maybe another half tablespoonful. So the amount of flour you use here is gonna depend on the amount of fat you've got from your sausages, but it's about the same in volume as fat. So if there's about a tablespoonful of fat, you want about a tablespoonful of flour. And I'm just gonna cook this now so this is a bit like making a roux, except we're using the lard from the sausages instead of butter. So I'm just gonna fry that off to cook the flour and keep it on the move because we wanna try and release some of that crusty stuff off the bottom of the pan there as well. So now that the flour's had a nice little sizzle in the fat, I'm gonna add in some of that water from the potato. And now we've got to keep it on the move. Whoa, in fact, I think I need to turn the heat down. Because this is where it's going to thicken and turn into a gravy. So keep it on the move, and we're just going to keep on stirring onto the bottom of the pan to release those bits of crusty stuff that were on there from the sausages. So yeah, that's thickened up really well. We're going to put some more of this liquid in here. It's looking good. Now, 
it's going to need a little bit more liquid and I've got some left but rather than putting that straight into there I'm going to put that in the onion pan there and deglaze this a bit as well because there's some caramel that's on the bottom of this pan from these onions so I don't want to lose that that's all flavor so we'll just deglaze the onion pan and then get those onions in there with the rest of the gravy and you can see how that has added a bit more brown to the color of the gravy a little taste for gauging the seasoning level yeah definitely could handle a bit of salt in there so we could put a stock cube in there but I'm gonna put some Marmite in or off-brand Marmite maybe about a level teaspoonful which again will contribute to the colour as well as the, as the flavour. It's starting to look really good. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, that's good. Mm, that's got a real deep umami sort of flavour now from that marmite. And of course from all the bits of the pan drippings from the sausages that have come off the bottom. So I'm going to turn that right down now and just let that simmer while we make the mash. I've got a little bit more liquid from the potatoes. If I need to loosen this up a bit more before we serve, I can easily do that. So mashed potatoes. Now, I'll talk while I'm mashing these. Before any of the hate comments appear, let me just say, there are lots of different ways to mash potatoes and lots of different people like them the way they like them. A lot of people will like their mashed potatoes to be very buttery and very creamy. I personally like them to be a bit coarse and lumpy and a bit on the fluffy side because I find that they absorb gravy better that way. The only people who are wrong about mashed potatoes is the people who say there's only one way to do them and it's their way. There are a hundred different ways to do mashed potatoes. If you like them smooth and creamy and buttery, if you like to add cream and milk and maybe some people add an egg I think, then do that. Have them the way you like them. The only sense in which you're going to get it wrong is if you don't end up making what you intended to make. Okay, that is actually about as far as I want to mash those potatoes. I like them to have a few little lumps in there still. That's my personal preference. Some people like to pass them through a sieve and end up with something that's very smooth. And more power to you if that's what you like. Do it the way you like it. So here it is. So, mashed potato. Is that enough for you? Yeah. These lovely sausages. Jenny, how do you, how do you want two? Yeah, two is enough. Okay, I'll start with two. I might, I might come back for a third one. Whoops, oh, looks like the. Looks like I'm having three. Please? Do you want to help yourself to gravy? There's a spoon there to make it easy. Okay, and so all that just needs is some of that nice onion gravy. And there we go. Classic bangers and mash. And I think a little bit of whole grain mustard. Just my preference to have a bit of mustard with sausages. Okay, let's get stuck in. So, mm. nice. What's the verdict, Jenny? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Just what you need on a cold day. Hmm. Proper comfort food, I think, sausage mash. Mm. So where we cook these sausages really slowly in the pan, they've stayed really tender and juicy inside, at the same time as being completely cooked and really nicely browned on the outside. So there we go, that's how I cook bangers and mash. Now having said all of that about my mashed potato and your mashed potato and so on, I am really interested to know what your preferences are. So by all means, tell me how you like mashed potato. Just maybe don't say it's the only way to do it. So thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me in watching Babatunde's version of this in Nigeria. I think that's going to be interesting actually because he's never had sausages and mash before. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.